I've been working on a, a model of um, how cultures fail and trying to focus it on the um, effectively the cost of membership of a culture. So if you work for uh, an oil company at the moment, in, in, in sort of governmental terms or in industry terms, oil companies are good because they're big and they generate lots of money and they generate, they pay lots of taxes and they, they ensure that the lights come on and I can charge my iPad. So whatever my sort of feelings about green energy or, or uh, energy independence or whatever, the fact is that, that they're, they're legal, good, big companies. But we're having a big debate at the moment around fracking, you know, this sort of process of um, uh, breaking up the shale rocks and getting the gas out. It's a big and very contentious issue at the moment. So if you work for an oil company um, as an individual, in whatever role, there's some level of conflict between uh, different parts of your life. So it may be that you agree with some of the things they do, but don't agree with other of the things they do. It may be that some of your friends think it's a good thing you work there, whilst others think it's a really bad thing you work there. And so we get all these individual pressures that build up. If we're going to be part of a culture and an organisation, it, um, it builds pressures. And, and I've tried to sort of chart these around the cost of membership, the aspirations we have to be a good person, the investments that we make in terms of our integrity and our time and our effort and our energy and the rewards we're looking for it. Because of course some people want to earn a huge amount of money, which is fine, and other people want to feel fulfilled and other people want to do good and other people don't really care, they just want to work nine to five so they can go and do gardening, which is their passion. So we have to recognize these are different for everybody. But I think what happens is um, these small tensions that build between us lead large organizational cultures to fracture. And we find sub-communities which are cohesive so there's a group of people who are broadly aligned. They have shared values and shared principles and kind of feel one way, although they may not be aligned with the overall mechanisms and workings of, 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 of what a business does. But neither are they so misaligned that they choose to take themselves out or be fired or, or whatever. So, um, so you see these gaps opening up. You see it in banks between the investment bank and the other parts of the bank. So in the investment banks, people earn huge amounts of money, but they also earn huge revenues. But people who work in your high street branch are more like us. <laughs> They're probably not expecting to earn a million pounds. And they don't necessarily agree with that fact, but it's part of the organization they're in. And I think what then happens is when cultures become toxic and they fail, it's not because there are 10 people up in London who are doing something terribly wrong. It's because the, these, these gaps between cohesive elements provide permissive space for bad decisions to be made.